Hey guys, this video is going to cover the basic ideas associated with uh, quadrilaterals that are inscribed to circles. Let's start off by taking a look at some uh, basic concepts that are associated with this idea. Um, what we have here is <clears throat> With a uh, inscribed quadrilateral, the angles that are opposite one another are always going to be supplementary. This is just a property of quadrilaterals uh, when they are inscribed to a circle that is always true. If you just have a normal quadrilateral drawn, I'm just going to make something up on the spot here. Um, let's just say it kind of looks like that. And uh, uh, don't even worry about that little line not connecting there. Um, in this situation, it's not always true that the opposite angles are going to be supplementary. But when you have a quadrilateral that is inside of a circle like this, the opposite angles will always be supplementary, meaning they're going to add up to 180 degrees. The same would be true for the other two angles. All four of these angles could be different. That's very possible. So that's why you're seeing the single, double, uh, triple, and quadruple angle marker there. Um, some of those angles could be the same measure, but all of them could be different uh, measurements. But what's always true is that the opposite angles will be supplementary, meaning they are going to add up to 180 degrees. Um, and then the uh, verbiage of this situation, <clears throat> you would say that the circle is circumscribing the quadrilateral. Um, when you're talking about it being circumscribed, you have the four endpoints that are on the quadrilateral that are highlighted in orange here. Uh, those four endpoints all sit on the circumference of the circle. So um, something else just to... Uh, kind of further our understanding of uh, inscribed quadrilaterals. Um, when you have an inscribed angle, um, which is an angle that is has its vertex on the circumference of the circle, uh, the measure of that angle, so angle four in this case, that measurement is always going to be half the measurement of the arc that the angle is intercepting. So what I mean by that is uh, angle four right here, the measurement of it, it's going to be half the measurement of the angle, or the arc, I should say, that is bound right here in green. Uh, so whatever whatever that measurement is, you, you simply divide it by two, and that'll be the measure of the inscribed angle. Uh, so let's just take a look at what that is for this particular example. Um, we have uh, 60 and 80 are the two measurements of the arc. So we're going to add those together to get 140 and then simply divide that by 2 because the measure of angle 4 right there is going to be half the measurement of the arc. So 140 times 1 half, that's the same thing as dividing by 2. Um, that's going to give you 70, and there you go. Um, what you can also do, oh yeah, the rest of the numbered angles. Whoops, not just angle 4 here. Um, what we uh, can also do to figure out the measurement of the other angles, uh, using what we talked about on the previous slide, the measure of angle 4 and angle 2, because they are across from one another, we know that if we add them together, we should get 180 degrees. They are supplementary, as it said on the previous slide. So now we can say that the measure of angle 4 is 70 degrees. In order to figure out the measurement of angle 2, we simply would subtract 70 from both sides, and the measure of angle 2 is 110 degrees. The... Uh, method right here for perhaps getting the measure of angle one. Um, we know that we have a, uh, a semicircle right here. And a semicircle is going to be uh, valued at 180 degrees. And we also have angle one as an inscribed angle that is, uh, is, is creating the boundary of this semicircle. So that same rule from before, uh, half of the angle's measurement will be, or half of the arc is going to be the measurement of the inscribed angle. Uh, we can simply take 180 degrees as this semicircle right here and divide that by two to get the measurement of angle one. Because again, angle one, is an inscribed angle. 
and whatever the measurement of the arc that the inscribed angle is, uh, is, is creating, you just take that arc's measurement and you divide it by two. And that'll be the value of the inscribed angle. So 180 divided by 2 is 90. Angle 1 is 90 degrees. And then again, we know that the opposite angles are going to be supplementary. So the only way that you would get 180 when you already have 90 is 90 plus 90. So that's the measurement of angle 3. All right, let's just take a look at some examples. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to work them out on your own and then hit resume whenever you are ready. Uh, we are trying to find the measurement of each vertex. So the four vertices would be uh, B, E, D, and C. And uh, we could start anywhere in this problem, but uh, let's just start here. Finding the measurement of angle B. Uh, we know that arc E D, C is a semicircle. We can see right here that line EC is a diameter going through the center of the circle. Um, so we can simply take the, uh, the semicircle being 180 degrees, and we know that the uh, inscribed angle that has its endpoints on that semicircle, um, that angle is going to be half the measurement of the arc and half of 180 is 90, so angle B is 90 degrees. Uh, let's take the same approach with finding the measurement of angle E. Angle E is creating the arc B, C, D. Uh, so what we can do here um, we know that the 84 degrees that we see right there, if we were to subtract that from the entire semicircle right here, if we were to subtract 84 from that, we would be left with the part of the semicircle right there that we need to find. So 180 minus 84 is 96. And what we now know is that uh, the angle right here, angle E, which creates the arc that we uh, were trying to look for. We already knew the 100 was there. We had to figure out that 96 because we can now use the inscribed angle rule. Uh, half of the arc will be the measurement of the inscribed angle. And 100 plus 96 is 196. So half of 196, that's going to be 98 degrees. So that is the measurement of angle E right there. And now we can use some shortcuts. We know that opposite angles on an inscribed uh, quadrilateral will always be supplementary. So we know that um, angle E and angle C, if we were to add them together, we would get 180 degrees. So 180 minus 98 degrees is 82. So that is the measurement of angle C right there. And then we can take the exact same approach with angle D. Um, 180 minus 90 is going to be 90 degrees. Here's one more example, um, pretty much highlighting the same ideas talked about in the previous example, uh, where you have the um, inscribed arc being, or inscribed angle being half the measurement of the arc idea and opposite angles being supplementary idea. Um, take a moment, pause the video, and try to work these out and hit resume when you're ready. Okay, so uh, let's begin by uh, figuring out the uh, value of angle A in this case. We'll just go in alphabetical order. Um, so the 100 is creating the boundary for this arc right here that I'm highlighting in yellow. And we know from the previous exercise that the measurement of the, uh, of the angle, so 100, is going to be half the measurement of the arc. And the arc right now only has a 99 degree symbol right there and then the A right there. So we know that if 99 were added to A, we would have the measurement of the entire uh, arc right there in yellow, and we would be able to finish the calculation. So that's how this equation got set up right here. Um, there's other strategies for figuring it out, but I just chose to show it in a sort of algebraic kind of way. Um, so working this out, we can multiply both sides by 2 
and that'll cancel out the one half that's right there. And then uh, this will become 200 and then subtract 99 from that and you get 101. Uh, solving equations is something that would be suitable for another video. Um, so I am assuming we can solve equations um, if we're doing this geometry work. So um, arc A is 101 degrees, so we figured that out right there. And now we can uh, figure out arc C um, by doing the opposite angles, uh, summing to 180 degrees, the supplementary angles idea. That concept can be used right now. We know that if we were to add angle C and the 96, the sum should be 180 degrees. So if we set that equation up and subtract 96 on both sides, C would be 84 degrees. Next, we can now use the 84 right here. And we know that the angle, the inscribed angle formed right here, that's 84 degrees. If we were to take half the measurement of the arc that I am putting the scribbly line on right now, um, if we were to take half that measurement, we should get 84. And we now know that angle A and B have the values 101 and, uh, oh, we don't know angle B yet, but we know um, that angle A is 101, so we can substitute that into the equation right there and, uh, and get our answer for angle B. So by substituting 101, we can then multiply both sides by 2. That'll cancel out the 1 half right there. And then um, 184 times 2, and then subtract 101 from both sides. And you're going to get 67 uh, degrees for that, for that arc right there for angle B. Um, and then lastly, angle D. Angle D is opposite the 100 right there. So we know that the opposite angles are going to be supplementary. So 180 degrees will equal the sum of angle D plus 100. So just subtract 100 from both sides and then you are left with D as 80 degrees. I hope this video has helped and uh, please let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment or a like below and I'll see you guys next time.